DC's New Age of Heroes continues as Mr. Terrific forms his team in the weirdest of circumstances. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is I Write Reviews, the show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. Make sure you subscribe to get more of these every single week. The book that I want to talk about is The Terrifics Number 1 by Jeff Lemire, with art by Ivan Reyes, and this is going to be one of my most anticipated series, simply because I really love the artist and I really love the writer. However, Mr. Terrific, the team of Metamorpho, Plastic Man, and Intangible, Invisible, whatever girl, are going to be showing up in a very odd way. So let's dive in and see what we can kind of get out of the Dark Universe and this new Terrific team that's taking on the multiverse. Continuing on with the introduction of DC's New Age of Heroes, The Terrifics by Jeff Lemire and Ivan Reyes is going to be kind of like, I, I don't want to necessarily say a Fantastic Four clone, but it's going to be something that's going to really jump into the Dark Multiverse and help explore those situations. So when we open up the Trifold cover, we get Simon Stagg, his Neanderthal kind of genetically engineered compadre Java. We've also got what looks to be Tom Strong and his family members. So it's going to be a pretty interesting book for us to jump into. As we see the T-Sphere kind of land back on Earth. You've got Java kind of eating a moth, but really the important thing is that Mr. Terrific is back from the events of Dark Knight's Metal, and the editor even calls that out saying, hey, you should probably read Dark Knight's Metal because that's what is originating all of these titles for DC's New Age of Heroes. But in the meantime, while he's been on some sort of multiversal adventure, the head of Stag industry, Simon Stag, has stolen Terrific Tech and has been starting to fiddle with the Dark Multiverse himself. And it's clear that he's in over his head as soon as he makes his entrance into the comic book. Of course, he opens up the portal so that that way we actually see Rex Mason's Metamorpho being held aloft in front of this portal to the Dark Multiverse, which is kind of running rampant. They have no ability to close it. They can't control it. So, obviously, Mr. Terrific's going to have to step in, but there's another person that's going to have to step in, and who's still in his egg form, and that is Plastic Man. Of course, the reason that everything's kind of running rampant is that Metamorpho, you know, Rex has been converted into Nth Metal, as Sapphire kind of helps relay. So, it's one of those situations where this Nth Metal has been conducted the dark energies of the dark multiverse and has created this runaway portal situation which is almost I wouldn't necessarily say cataclysmic at this point in time, but it's definitely causing some issues that could create bigger problems inside the direct DC multiverse. So with Metamorpho breaking loose and starting to fight against Mr. Terrific, uh, the inability to close the portal, we actually see a situation where the dark multiverse starts to suck Metamorpho into it because he's created and made of this nth metal, which drags Mr. Terrific and the Plastic Man Egg into the portal with it as Simon Stagg, Java, and Sapphire are left there just watching stranded uh, in the regular DC multiverse. So as they're headed into this portal, we actually see the awakening of the Plastic Man Egg. Well, it's going to introduce a character that's always had a really interesting personality. So as he wakes up, you know, Mr. Terrific kind of yells out at him, and he throws both Metamorpho in, and Mr. Terrific into his mouth, and then starts to kind of create himself out of his interior as he's shielding them from the energies of the Dark Multiverse. There is a lot of explanation that goes on in this comic book. That's the one thing about this. There is a heavy amount of exposition that's really happening. You know, you've got explanations of what's really happening with Rex Mason's Metamorpho. You have Mr. Terrific explaining how these things kind of function in a very scientific manner as well as a continuity manner. So it's just a ton of stuff that they're really downloading onto the reader to try and get them up to speed. You do get a little bit of Plastic Man perspective as you kind of go over these next few pages where he's kind of he's giving you the history of how he actually became the egg, what he was originally doing. He had talked to Batman. He was being sent into the dark multiverse as a probe, and when he came back, he was an egg. He feels frustrated. He feels used because, well, that's what he was. He was used. Of course, you've got Rex, who's got a very interesting personality. He's more concerned about Sapphire than he is himself, and you have Mr. Terrific, who just continues to explain things upon things upon things. Uh, as they're traveling through the dark multiverse, which should have no signs of life left in it, but that's one of the interesting things that we're probably going to find out more about in Dark Knight's Metal Number 6. We actually get a beacon. There's a beacon that is showing some sort of signs of life and distress that they need to answer at this point in time, maybe to get a little bit more information. Maybe it's the key to them making their way home. But the real heart of this is that there's a reason for them to continue to explore this situation so that that way they can try and make their way back. It's kind of it's kind of like a lost in space vibe. Uh, of course, there's a lot of convenient explanations. You know, Mr. Terrific obviously knowing the correct combination for Metamorpho to create protection for himself, Plastic Man naturally being involved 
vulnerable to the energies of the dark multiverse. And Mr. Terrific, after having experience with this situation, having his T-spheres create a force field so that that way they don't, he doesn't have to worry about it. It just makes for a lot of convenient explanations as to how they can work inside the dark multiverse, which is obviously terrible for other people and creates these unreal influences. So as Plastic Man belches them out onto the, the floor of this, we get a little bit of a sight of the landscape, and the landscape isn't really a planetoid that they assume it is. As Plastic Man stretches out, he actually sees that it seems to be the body of some sort of giant celestial type creature, like an internal kind of thing, and it's just, it's gruesome and grotesque, and it's a really good rendering of it, but it's just like, oh shit, they're on a dead body, a giant floating dead body in space that seems to be infested by crabs, so we're not sure what kind of transgressions this previous celestial has had, however, the crabs seem to be under the control of an intangible girl, as she's got her ghostly figure coming up into a little bit more solid form towards her head, she's so thankful that these people are actually real. She explains who she is. You know, she's Lin Yawazo from Bigitzal. 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 What, what, however you want to say it, but she is from some sort of planet where all the people can become intangible. And she's unaware of any kind of beacon that has been set about on this particular, you know, dead eternal. And But she's just looking for the kind of assistance that she's hopefully going to get from Mr. Terrific, Metamorpho, and Plastic Man in trying to get a home, in trying to escape, and trying to make it back to her home planet. However, Michael Holt is not about to, to give up on this because the beacon is still active, and it's possible that Linya just didn't necessarily know how to activate it. And so when he goes up and hits the control console, we get the debut of Tom Strong inside this series. So his he reads off his message, you know, it's just like, if you're seeing this, I'm probably dead. And that means it's up to you to save the universe. So that's really cool because Tom Strong is a creation of Alan Moore from back in the Wildstorm days when Jim Lee's Wildstorm was not a part of DC. So seeing him introduced into the DC Dark Multiverse just means that they're continuing to appropriate a lot of creations of Alan Moore and bring them into this particular book. So I am interested to see what kind of role Tom Strong plays inside the Terrifics. As far as the Terrifics themselves, I think that it's a little bit heavy on the exposition and it's just one of those situations where if you're not ready for that kind of weight, that kind of explanation, that exposition that gets you into this story, you're going to, to have a little bit tougher time getting into it. Overall, I really like the art. There are some times where I feel like it's a little bit wonky, but uh, overall, Ivan Reyes is, is a very good storyteller, so it's just one of those things where it might be for everybody, it might not be for everybody. A lot of people could probably see this as a Fantastic Four ripoff, but if it's talking about the exploration of the DC Dark Multiverse, I, I'm on board to see what they can do with that, at least the first three issues, because we know that this is going to be a relatively limited arc to get everybody introduced to the concept, so that, that way they can continue on and go forward. Overall, I would say stick with it for the next issue, at least, if not the first three, but uh, I want to know what you guys think too, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.